Welcome to the Tuned In Podcast, where we will dive into the mindset, spirituality, practical tools, and tips for making you the best version of yourself on and off the stage. I'm your host, Natalia, and I'm a holistic vocal coach and a mindset coach. So let's dive in in today's episode in three, two, one. I'm a vocal coach and mindset coach. And today I have a very special and unique, I don't even know, I want to say person. I want to say a beautiful soul. His name is Ishmael Perez and he's here with me. And I kind of don't like to even introduce you because I want you to introduce yourself and however you would like for people to perceive you. So introduce yourself, Perez. (laughs) Thank you, Natalia. It's an honor to be here. I appreciate you having me on your show. My name is Ishmael Perez. I am the author of Our Cosmic Origin, a book that I published a little over a year ago, uh, revealing the true history of the earth um, and how it pertains to the true origins of humanity uh, related to the galactic history, where we came from. But uh, above all, describing the the truth about our celestial cosmic beginnings, how we all began as, you know, these beautiful celestial beings of light and through a process known as involution, which is the descent of spirit into matter, um, we uh, we gradually went to lower densities until we became physical matter. And so right now we are experiencing the end result of that uh, first phase of the process of involution. So now we are getting ready to ascend back to our original form, which is celestial, pure, angelic, humanoid. And that's what we are. You know, uh, we are celestial beings, multidimensional, uh, currently experiencing a temporary limited body. But even this body was part of, of the overall experiment so that the evolution of our consciousness continues to reach higher levels of of expansion rather and um i consider myself an awakened starseed like most of you out there you know whether you know it or not you guys are all volunteers you know you guys are all older souls that took the the call to come and help mother earth and uh you know turmoil times uh, that you know where she was heading into and um through our decision to volunteer you know we are now saved the planet and um the organic way of life so yeah that's that's who i am (laughs) (laughs) you see why i brought him (laughs) i love it i probably most people that are listening to you right now they're like whoa what was that there's a lot of things that probably maybe resonate with you and most of my audience as i was kind of mentioning before we started this they're they're spiritual people there are people that are knowing that there's much more than the five senses out there they know there's something going on out there but they just don't have the knowledge and they don't have the proof quote unquote and and kind of being socially accepted to think that it's even something that could happen Mm -hmm. so my question is for you how do you know all these things how do you how was like let's say when was the moment that you well quote quote unquote got enlightened when you got that awakening in you to know that so much more than what we see here in touch and smell and how Mm -hmm. you transcended to what you are now and being that beautiful messenger well it all started as a kid you know um ever since i became aware of my existence here in in earth i knew that i wasn't from here it was very hard for me to fit in from day one And I already had an inner understanding of how things really worked. I was able to communicate with plants and animals and trees. And I was able to read other people's thoughts at the age of four and five. And I also experimented with telekinesis. And, um, you know, unfortunately, due to my religious upbringing, I was forced to suppress that for many, many years. So It was kind of hard for me growing up um, as a kid. You know, I was um, a misfit and um, it was hard for me to fit in. I I didn't really have any friends growing up because I was always the oddball. Um, I was that kid in class that would uh, uh, just stare off into space. And, uh, you know, everybody thought I was dumb or stupid, but I was just having visions. And uh, I've always been abstract, you know, always been in my mind. And uh, one day at the age of 19, I learned uh, Kriya Kundalini Yoga. 
And when I started practicing that, um, I kind of had a reawakening of my multidimensionality. And then that's when I became aware that I wasn't human, that I was one of millions of volunteers that decided to take the call to come save, save the earth. And um, my job was to, and I felt like part of my mission was to kind of awaken the others um, in that volunteer, you know, that are spread out throughout the earth um, so that we could remember our mission. And so I started researching at a very young age. I think at the age of 16, I was already uh, reading like Plato's Republic, philosophy, political volume series, like university text material, you know, while I was still in high school. And um, with the photographic memory, um, I guess that was part of my gifts. I was able to, um, you know, be ahead of my time. And so at the age of 25, I wrote my first book, The Secret Government, which uh, kind of reveals everything that now is unfolding, you know, all the hideous, uh, dark occult stuff that's been going on for, for, I would say for not centuries, for millions of years. And so in this book, I reveal the, the secret history of the earth, the bloodline association based on the battle between what I call the two brotherhoods, the dark and the light, and how everything that has ever occurred in throughout history has been the intelligent planning of these two brotherhoods, whether for good or for bad. Mm -hmm. And so unfortunately for the last, what, 5,000 years, you know, we've been under the yoke of the dark brotherhood, but their time is up. And that explains the great awakening that is taking place. You know, people are um, breaking out of the matrix, breaking out of their programming. And um, my latest book, Our Cosmic Origin, um, that's been a hit, you know, it's become an international bestseller. I on saw Amazon. on Amazon, it's incredible. And I feel Amazon is the true testimonial because this is the people's choice. It's not somebody like, you know, you know how it is. Sometimes we even pay to be the fur, the number one bestseller, but are you? But this is the true definition, I believe, of success when the people choose you. And I think Amazon is a great testimonial for that. So congratulations. That's amazing. Thank you. Yeah, it's it's been an honor. You know, my book has um, changed a lot of lives. Apparently, I've been getting just emails, DMs from people from across the world thanking me for uh, filling in a lot of gaps for them um, and then, you know, activating them and just telling me that um, reading my book activated galactic memories. And so to me, it's it's an honor. You know, I feel like, like I'm fulfilling my mission, uh, which is to, um, you know, activate and trigger the multidimensionality and the other star seeds that are spread throughout the, the planet so that we could, you know, fulfill our mission as the chosen ones, pretty much, you know, the saviors of all. <laughs> I think we're yeah. all chosen ones. People don't understand that in order to be in this planet Earth, there's so much that needs to happen. We're, what is it, one, two billion, of, like one, two billion to just get to a point where the egg and the sperm get developed to where we are, but it's so much more than that, right? Mm -hmm. And me being a new mom is just you experience when you give birth and you give life and you experience that there's something you realize how we don't have control, how there's some, something bigger than us. And the more you're surrendering to it and you become that, as you said, messenger, or you have a certain mission and you start to listening to that mission and whatever you meant here to do to enhance humanity um, that's where, that's where we actually save the world. And I wanted to come back when you said Kundalini, it's very interesting. Cause I also, when I was 19 years old, actually a little earlier than that, I got exposed to Kundalini and I got to tell you that it, it's a, for those who don't know, Kundalini is, it's a pretty much channeling your sexual energy through the, all the chakras until you get to the crown chakra and to really enhance that um, passion, that life force to something greater. And it's, it's, it's amazing practice, but I got to tell you, after practicing it for four years internationally in Israel, and then a little bit in Europe, and then a little bit in here in New York, I almost felt like it was a cult. And it got to a point where it was a little culty. And that's what kind of, <laughs> kind of pushed me away out of it. Is that something you also felt? Well, it does activate um, superhuman abilities uh, if you do it right. Mm. The whole because sexual energy is is um, spiritual power if you learn how to control it and harness it. You know they say that our body is made out of um, the entire composition of the cosmos. So not only do we carry within our our body the 
you know, the gaseous, the, you know, the helium and all the different chemicals that make up mm. the third dimensional universe. But we also carry the other invincible forces that make up the other 96% of the so-called missing universe. It's all within our bodies. Um, you know, our bodies are, the, see that one of the things that I, I like to talk about is that everything that's out there, it's inside us, you know? So when we learn, when we learn how to connect and how to harness our own indiv individual uh, power, we begin to uh, ultimately harness external power, you know, and uh, kundalini energy for me has been the driving force in my, you know, throughout my life, uh, it's, it has allowed me to do the impossible, you know, to manifest things at the speed of light. Um, it's, it's done a lot of miracles for me, you know, I've, I've escaped death a few times, you know, wow. and uh, yeah, I've died when I come back and um, I've, so what, uh, can you tell us a little bit more? Cause I don't think a lot of people <laughs> experience that. So I know I would like to know what was that thing for you? Did you see a light? Did you see a tunnel? Did you see a life flashing by or what was that experience for you? Uh, one time I, I saw my body floating, my spirit, I'm sorry, my floating out of my body. I saw the doctors, uh, they were using the electroshocks to kind of like jumpstart my heart. And then I, I, something told me, Ishmael, your time is, hasn't come yet. You have to go back into your body. And I said, all right. And I just remember them doing the shocking uh, treatment the third for the third time. And then that's when my body, my spirit came back into my body and I woke up another time. I was in a severe car accident where if, if, if it was anybody else, they wouldn't have made it. And so the doctor called me a miracle because I was on life support for three weeks. Wow. So they didn't know if I was going to make it or not. And, and I think a lot of it has to do with just my willpower to continue living, to continue, you know, uh, existing here in the third dimension because of my life purpose, you know, I'm not, I didn't come here to die. I came here to to really uh, alchemize and transmute this physical vessel into pure, you know, into spirit matter, uh, which is what I call the ascension when we become immortalized, right? And so um, that's the reason why I, I think that uh, I kept coming back after so many times of dying. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> How does your family react to your beautiful mission and everything that you do? Do, do they understand you? Do they support you? Or you mm -hmm. still feel... Not, not really. at all. Not no, at all. I've right? always been the black sheep. Uh, yeah. Me and my mother, my mother was just like me. I think she was an early star seed. She was born in the 50s. Um, had all the spiritual gifts, clairvoyance, cliff sentient, you know, precog. She was able to see the future of things before they happened. Uh, an extreme intuitive empath. And uh, all her sisters hated her and because they envied her because not only was she beautiful, she had natural beauty. Um, but, you know, she liked the fair skin. She had the green eyes um perfect face and everything uh but more more importantly they uh envied her because she had the spiritual gifts that i guess are hereditary you know her great no her grandmother from her dad's side had them and then my grandfather's sisters were all mediums and they all have the gifts but oh, wow. none of my aunts inherited them and my mother did she inherited all these spiritual gifts and then i was her firstborn so i inherited the gifts so she was the black sheep of the family and then i became the black sheep of the family so um, it was very difficult growing up with my cousins. You know, I come from a big family, like over 57 cousins, nine aunts, two uncles. Wow. Um, <laughs> it's fun. I guess the weddings are very, <laughs> very big. Well, I love they it. They stopped inviting me to the weddings just because they've always thought it was weird, you know? So <laughs> I, I haven't, when it comes to my immediate family, um, you know, it's been 15, 20 years since I've been invited to anything. They just, they, they think I'm weird. They, they think I'm just out there, you know, and, and, and it's fine because they're all asleep, you know, and I'm, I'm not going to hate them for that. I'm still going to be here for them if they ever need me, but in their eyes, I'm a misfit. And so, you know, I do what I do and that's just my purpose. I love my mission. it. I love but it. And I think a lot of singers and a lot of people that are, I'm just kind of, kind of wanted to speak to the singers that are listening to us on the performers, because this is what it's all about. And I think one of the things I wanted to ask you coming back, you know, you said I gained all this knowledge. I was reading all these books. What is truly more important in your, in your opinion? Is it good to be that down having, excuse me, those downloads that are not really supported by data or having the knowledge of reading all these books? What do you think is more important? The downloads. Yeah. The because downloads. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm connecting with my future self, with higher dimensions or versions of myself. And so to me, even if I can't find any data to back it up, to me, 
you know, I, I know it to be true. It's just an inner knowing, you know. That's the, so, so, so interesting because yeah. people, when they ask me, how do you know what do you know? And how we don't even know what we read is actually truth. Like what makes a fact a fact? Everything is perception, mm -hmm. right? That's why it's so beautiful what you said. We can create the world. We can create everything we want and manifest everything we want because everything starts within us. So if mm -hmm. we make it a reality for ourselves, this is where the magic happens. Absolutely. Um, right. So my question to you, for those who are a little bit of a sleep, but I think after COVID and having this really interesting experience where the entire world was basically experienced the same thing. And it got us to understand that we are more one and more unified than what we think and mm -hmm. start looking into the things that we so used to being doing. If it's go to work every single day or go to college or doing the things that we are supposed to. And take a step back and just kind of rest and look at it and asking ourselves the questions of, do I really want this? Or do I want to really be with that person that is sleeping next to me? Or what kind of life I want to create for myself? Like, my question is for you, how does somebody that is aware that we were living in a matrix, we were living in a world that is not really free as much as we think is free, right? how we can truly create that freedom within and create a reality that we actually want to live for ourselves. Well, first we have to come to the understanding that, um, you know, since childbirth, we've all been programmed, you know, everyone, even the star seeds. Um, the beauty of the star seeds though, is that most of them are breaking out of their program. However, a few, I still think that a few are still kind of in the program so once we recognize that everything is a program your whole life is a script reality as we know it is a script everything is always pre-planned before it happens similar to the movie the truman show i mean that's a perfect documentary about how life really is um after we recognize that then we have to really go within and ask ourselves what is it that we want what is it that makes us happy and when we ask those questions um, you begin to cultivate a relationship with your inner child and your inner child and your higher self are one and the same. There is no difference, you know? And so to me is, is first realizing that we're all programmed and then breaking the program by beginning a communication by beginning, beginning to establish a relationship with your inner being, because your inner being wants to bloom, wants to express itself, whether it's through music, whether it's through singing, I mean, that's what makes us so beautiful is that we have these God-given talents. Mm. And, um, you know, when you sing, it's a form of praising God. When you play an instrument, it's a form of praising God. You know, you are expressing yourself as a sovereign being. So whether it is through painting, whether it is, you know, whatever it is that your, your, your passion is, you have to follow that. You have to follow your heart's desire because if, if you don't, you're not living according to your blueprint, according to your purpose, you know, and so that, that's why I always tell people, go within yourself, get in touch with your inner child, your inner being, because it's a reflection of your higher self, and really see what you want in life. Because once you do that, you know, the universe is here to give us everything we want, because in a sense, you are the universe, mm. you know, the universe is you. And you have to stop seeing things as uh, I need to attain, you know, there is nothing to attain. Everything that you need and that you want is within yourself. All you have to do is go within and, you know, connect. That's it. <laughs> simple as so that. It sounds simple, but I'm I'm going to be, you know, devil's advocate and say, yeah, you sure. know what? It sounds great, Ishmael. I really want to pursue to become a full-time singer or a full-time speaker, or I want to be spiritual and, and be on a mountain and, and, and meditate all day but I need to survive. I need to live. I need to make money. How you escape that still the matrix kind of holding us, making us feel safe, quote unquote, by having a safe job that nothing mm -hmm. is safe these days. But how do you escape that kind of inner doubt? Well, you have to first believe in yourself. And mm -hmm. one of the things that uh, I guess people fail in the manifestation art of uh, attracting things that you want is they really don't believe in themselves. You know, that's a barrier. First, you have to dissolve the barrier. You have to believe in you because no one else is going to believe in you. You know, you have to be the one who believes in yourself. And once you really establish that belief, you know, uh, the mind is a powerful thing. You will begin to work miracles, but it all starts with you. And, and really it's your, 
your perception of things. Sometimes you have to change your mentality. You know, it's as simple as of, of changing your mentality from a type of, you know, I've always been, I was born poor. My family has always lacked. My dad has always worked three jobs just to one of, I am wealthy. You know, I am abundant. And you have to believe it because once you really truly believe it, Natalie, Natalia, now once you truly really believe it, Natalia, you begin to work your magic. And that's when things happen because more than anything, the universe, which is you, wants to be, you know, happy, wants to be, how can I say, the universe has your back because more than anything, the universe wants you to uh, fulfill your mission, to align with your purpose uh, because that's just the way things work, you know? I think what you said is so true. And I think this is one of the things I always say to my uh, beautiful students and, and clients is you have a given gift. There is something that is asking to be expressed through you. There's nobody else that mm. can do the same thing that you do in the way you do it, in an energetic way that you do it. And you can not take that lightly. Because if you're not fulfilling that purpose, if you're not fulfilling that calling, you're always going to feel not fulfilled. You're always going to feel like something is missing. Even though, even though you're going to have everything around me, you're going to have the money, you're going to have the family, you're going to have all those checklists that we all think is going to make us happy. But what truly makes us happy is by listening to our inner child, as you say, fulfilling our purpose growing, always evolving and moving to the next level and the next level. And as we spoke a little earlier about moving to the fifth dimension, moving to the next ascension of who we are as humanity, because that's what it's all about. Yeah. So, yeah, <laughs> it's amazing. Now, speaking of the fifth dimension, because mm -hmm. people were probably they listen to this, this may be the first time they hear about this. I know about this, but I want people that I have no clue what we just said. What is ascending to the fifth dimension? What does that mean? And what what are we in the fourth dimension? What, what is going on here? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, 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 we're currently in the fourth dimension. You know, it's it's um, it's just a matter of of acclimating. You know, to the fourth dimension. And the reason I say that is because um, things are coming to light. You know, things are no longer hidden. You know, the you could say the the cat is out of the box now. It's just a matter. Uh, it's it's now it's just an individual choice to to uh you know um how can i say it? to learn things for yourself but all the secrets are out you know everything that has been hidden for centuries uh, about the law of attraction about how everything's energy vibration how the universe really operates and how um we are one with everything it's all out now it's just a matter of how how, how much do you want to study how much do you want to um evolve yourself through personal growth so that's just a matter of choice now so everything's out uh, that's what the fourth dimension is. Now, the fourth dimension could also be different things. You know, we have a higher fourth dimension, uh, which is where uh, things are better than the third dimension. Things are becoming more unified, uh, more cooperative, more harmonious as we get ready to go into the fifth dimension. But then you have the lower fourth dimension where it's still very polarized. You know, in the esoteric uh, literature, they call it the astral realm. It's the mental realm. You know, that's where the magic will, once you master the fourth dimension, that's when you're really able to attract and manifest things as you want. And so the fourth dimension, you know, has two aspects of itself, just like the fifth dimension. So the fifth dimension could be multiple things. Um, many believe that the fifth dimension is where we are once again entering the age of light, the age of love. You know, there's many, I guess, terminologies to describe it, but it is an era where it's kind of like the Renaissance, where enlightenment is available to everyone, mm. where there is no longer secret societies. There is no longer elites holding on to the secret knowledge. It is a world where ev everything is given freely, and it's just a matter of, of individuals. It's just now up to the individual to you know, gravitate towards that so that they could begin to connect with their own multidimensionality, their higher self, and, and really establish that relationship with our creator, which is the ultimate gain, the ultimate, uh, I guess, quest, sorry, quest within, you know, of, of achieving and attaining the fifth dimension is having that direct uh, connection with God, with no mediators, just you and God, you know, and that's what the fifth dimension is. It is a, a place where people will no longer need 
masters, teachers, priests, pastors, ministers, that's all going to you know, be eliminated in the fifth dimension. It is a reality where every single individual will have their own connection to God, and it'll be a personal, private connection. You know, I am so excited to see that, to be honest with you. And I'm more excited to look, even when you said, of course, religion and music is such an important component in religion because it they know the power of music on people. They know they can completely reprogram people's subconscious by using a certain um, wave, a certain, um, I'm looking for the word, a specific sound or a specific, help me, what is that? Uh, the frequency, the certain, yeah, certain frequency that is, it can com completely subconsciously open ourselves up to be uh, open to suggestions, to be open to any mind control and, 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 and pretty much design us the way they would like for us to be designed. So it's very powerful music. And I'm thinking to myself, moving to this fifth dimension, what would be the role of a singer? What would be the role of a musician? Now that I don't need the record label to tell me if I am good enough or not good enough to be on the platform or, you know, be on stage, what would you think will change in the music industry and for singers, especially? Well, it's still, it's still going to be the same, except, um, you know, you're going to be, um, everyone that has these are these talents rather are going to be able to express themselves freely and receive their abundance through that. That's the difference. Mm. Yeah. So you're going to actually be able to do what you like to do best and be, you know, abundantly rewarded for it. That's <gasps> Guys, did you hear it? <laughs> we want that in writing, please. <laughs> sure. Beautiful. <laughs> sure. Amazing. And we're speaking of music and I'm thinking about the different planets and the different world. Because if you're listening to me, guys, and I think like attracts like, you know, there's much more than what we see. There's definitely we're not alone in this galaxy right and as you said we all kind of star seeds and we all came from this one big light um what do you think is the role that please music plays in those planets in in those cultures well it's it plays a very pivotal role well first of all you know um sound well part of the mechanism of um the unmanifest manifesting in physical form it's is through vibration through geometry and what holds that geometry geometry together is sound mm. and so you talk about the music of the spheres you know which is a form which is vibration frequencies coming together in harmony to create the manifested world and so music on a galactic interdimensional and cosmic level of reality plays a key role in the manifestation of everything that is solid everything that we perceive as the physical world so wow. yeah and that's why everything exists in those seven stages you know uh seven chakras right there's um you know seven uh scales in music right do me what is it called do me i can't even do, say me pa, so, la, si, do. yes yes uh, the seven solids you know the, the seven the seven gash uh, i guess what they call the, the seven metals you know iron mm -hmm. uh tin gold copper so that's just part of our of our um creation it is it's part of the mechanism of creation you could say so music sound plays a huge pivotal role in all of creation and um it is an art that is um experienced and expressed across the many universes you know just like mathematics is a universal language well so is music music is spread across the cosmos and the difference between uh the music here in our world and, and the music in advanced civilizations is that they really um they really, um, how can I say it? Uh, they, they really um, value it more so than we do because mm. it's a form of creation. Sound is creation, in other words. <laughs> do they use it in some of their ceremonies or they use it as a form of entertainment or a, or a way to communicate or all the above? Everything, yes. Everything. But, but above all, they use it uh, to create to create new worlds because wow. it is through yeah through sound through the music that comes from the sound frequency vibration geometry that precipitates into you know realities into solid physical forms yeah. this is incredible and what kind of instruments are they using are they using their voice are they using a certain instrument that we know i think that they have every instrument we have 
you know, but um, their voice is also an instrument, you know? Oh yeah. Big time. Yeah. But I think, as you said, a lot of times they even speak through obviously telepathy, right? They use their mind as a way to communicate, but do you think they actually use their voice to, uh, to speak? Is there, is it important enough for them or not really? I'm just interested. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. well, I mean, you know, those that are the civilizations that are uh, completely telepathic where they don't use sounds or words, um, they still play music and it's a, te- a music that is transmitted through telepathy. Ooh. So yeah, that's, a, yeah, that's something uh, that is a little bit more advanced than what we do here. <laughs> Definitely, definitely. I'll be interested to collaborate <laughs> and do a feature. That would be awesome to combine all the worlds and do one song, right? That would be very, very cool to do. That's beautiful. That's awesome. So Ishmael, my dear, please tell us, what is that? Because I feel you have a mission. You have something that you want people to listen and hear and, and get out of this. What do you want people to know? I just want them to know that... Um... You know, we, we are the most powerful beings in the entire multiverse. Multiverse because there's more than one universe. Um, we were literally God's ultimate masterpiece, prime creator, whatever you want to call it, the higher power. Uh, some people call it source. You know, we are the final manifestation of source and embodiment. And we just have to become aware of that, that there is nothing to attain. Everything that we want is already within us that's it that's it (laughs) and now what and now what so if you guys want to learn more go ahead definitely check out can you tell them where they can find you by the way sure i'm very active on instagram constantly giving updates giving forth information that empowers people my instagram is project restoration zion one uh it's all one word and i'm uh also um doing a class uh, on starseed cosmology so if you guys want to find out whether you are starseed or not and if you are you know what are the you know characteristics of a starseed where you come from we talk about the different star races we go we break down dimensions uh very detailed chakras uh, cosmic and galactic history in detail uh yeah it's very in-depth it's like my you know 20 year there's a research compacted into six hours, two hours a week for three weeks straight. It's called Starseed Cosmology course. I can give you the link for that, you know, if people are interested in Absolutely. learning. Absolutely. Absolutely. And also that you can find them on Unified, right? Oh, um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, shows, yeah Where it's the Netflix for the spiritual awakening people, <laughs> which is an amazing source to just see and learn what was unfortunately hidden from us for so many years and now it's all our it's all up to you to go and and seek the truth and learn more because it's really out here you know it's no more hidden so thank you so much ishmael for your time for coming here for sharing your knowledge your you know this is something that is definitely not something that my people are used to here and i'm so happy that you uh reached out to me and because i feel even if there's one person that heard this and feel something is resonating and he wants to go deeper and, and find his own truth and find all these things that you spoke about, it's a world of its own, right? It's, it's amazing. So thank you so much. And, You're welcome. Uh, and I'll also, see you soon. <laughs> oh, oh, and for those that want to order my book, uh, just type in our cosmic origin on Amazon. I could always give you the link if you want to put it on your description. Yes, definitely in the show notes. It's going to be all there. <laughs> um, and uh, as it is, and as you said, you can follow the, him on Instagram and uh, to get all the information and the latest, latest updates. I don't know what I cannot talk. <laughs> it's so weird. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you so much, Ishmael. And if you I'm guys want to hear more, if you have more kind of, following questions because i'm sure you will uh, i think ishmael will be and i'll be more than happy to come back again and answer those specific questions absolutely okay. anytime amazing. my friend amazing dear thank you so so much you're welcome